What is up, YouTube? That's here today. I'm back playing more Pokemon VDC 2023 Regulation D Rank Battles, and today we're going to be using a team that features a relatively underused Paradox Pokemon in Iron Moth. This thing has some amazing offensive type coverages to be able to perfectly counter the meta, at least in my opinion. We have a standard Stab Fiery Dance to be able to take out things like Goldangos and other pesky Pokemon before they Terra. We then have Energy Ball to be able to take out those Flutters and Goldangos after they go Water Terra. We also have Sludge Wave to take out those potential Heatrans after they they go Grass Terra, and they should be going Grass Terra because we're using things like Azumarill and Lando to condition them into doing that. This Iron Moth, if you save it to the late game and bring it out once like the speed controls away, this thing just one-shots everything. It's a super, super cool mod, and I think this is this is probably the best that Iron Moth's ever been in VGC so far for Scarlet and Violet. I also just really like this team in general. There's not a ton of speed control in it. Really, I don't think there's any forms of speed control in this team, and what it excels at is redirecting, having a good board state, having screens. It's a harder way to play the game than just clicking like Urshavu Tornadus or playing like Hard TR, but a good player playing this team that knows what they're doing will get better results than just one of those flowchart teams that uses like a Torn Urshi Shampoo Dragonite. So I think this is a really, really cool team. I'll leave a link to the Poke Paste and the owner that created it where I found it on Twitter. Again, very, very cool, cool team here. I highly recommend this one for leveling up your own skills as a player. And without further ado, let's get in on these games. Wish me luck. Here we go. Reggie, Drago, Goldango, Flutter, Urshi. This is like everything over there on that team. That team is super aggressive. Don't really know what we need to do here. I think I'm going to lead Grim. I think Grim is a decent lead against a lot of these. You can put up screens versus the Dragos and the, the Goldangos. And you can just spirit break the freaking Urshi. You can just spirit break it right in the face. What if I were to lead like Iron Moth? What's our Terra? As long as our Terra makes us not die, we have Grass Terra. Perfect. Um, we're like Grass Moth. Hey, <laughs> hey. These two are a pretty good core, I would say. And then, I don't think we need Lando here. I don't think we need it. I think Azumarill would be a lot better since there's so many special attackers and one of them is a Reggie Drago. This is a pretty good Mon here. And then realistically, like Goldango mirrors aren't great for us. We could think about bringing Amoongus here to be able to Pollen Puff our own Azumarill and have Azumarill hard carry. Because I think Azumarill can like 1v1 like all of those Pokemon. I'm going to bring the Amoongus. Now that's so much AoE over there. Hmm, it's hard to sell. It's a hard, hard thing to see here too. The Dango is fine. I think Dango's fine. We do not need Lando in this situation. They, their only physical attacker is Urshi and that auto crits through Intimidate. So Lando's pretty good. Um, I just don't think we need it in this exact matchup. So let's go into this and see what they're going to leave with. I, I'm thinking popular cores here are things like Urshi, Torn. Uh, you could see like Flutter Dango. Urshi Torn, cool. Urshi Dark, wow, okay, that's different. Urshi Dark actually is worse here for them because they have a worse matchup versus Grim. I wonder if I die. This Moth actually has a lot of defense investment, I think. So I actually don't think that I die. So that being said, what do I want to do this turn? just be bad what happens here i don't think i died the the wicked blow i don't i think i'm gonna live at about 10 hp unless they go dark terror double dip and then they can just take out moth and they trade moth for grim like we take those are you poison terra you go dark terror so you have to so you're over committing for this moth and I, i'll let you have it and then grim just takes you out and then we can just send out Azumarill and Aqua Jet it. Tailwind, this is completely fine, I think. It sucks if we lose a Mon, but I don't even know if we lose a Mon. You know what I mean? Wake up, go nuts. Like, this, this, we actually still might live. I'm not even kidding. Like, you, have, you might have to even have to have, like, a Bandera Multiplier. Now, we'll see. We'll see if they take, like, Orb Damage or something. Because I think this thing's EV spread is, like, heavy speed with, like, mostly uh, defense and special attack. Oh, wow, that's thick. Yeah, he lost the four times weakness there. Um... That should be fine, though, right? Like, Azumarill still kind of comes in and says, like, okay, so now what do you do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> like, I'm still just kind of here. Um, I'm just going to liquidate it because Aqua Jet won't KO there. And then I don't need to do any of these yet, but there's a lot of special attackers, so I'm just going to put up the light screen right now to make it so we take less from Bleak Wind. Yeah, and they were, like, way overcommitted there. Yes, they took the Moth out, but they have to pivot it out, right? So who's coming in here? That's totally choiced on that Urshi. Totally. Goldango on the on the liquid is not 
Not that great for you. You could bleak win me. Rain dance, please. <laughs> yeah, we don't need speed. That doesn't do anything. Speed drop, unlucky, but it's fine. Big damage. Nice. That's within Aqua Jet range. That's sick. Here we go. At this point, do we want to parting and bring in our Dango? Yeah, kind of. Um, it's free, right? And then we just hard swap back in the Grim to check. Yeah, that's great. Cool. I think this is a great play for us. Pivot out the Dango. They're trying to keep it alive, huh? Who's eating the Aqua Jet? Urshi can't eat two of them. Okay, we see their whole team now. And we're pivoting in that dango at just the right time. That's so good. We have a light screen up. Like next turn, we can literally just click like make it rain and Azumarill. Azumarill can even pivot out for Grim next turn. And that's fine. It's, it's crazy how like good of a core this is defensively to where we don't even need speed control and there's like nothing they can do. I think it's actually just shows how well made this team is. It forced your opponent to overcommit to respect our Iron Moth because they didn't know what it did. And then it just punches them with, like, correct defensive play. It's decent damage. I don't know if Dango takes out them. It'd be nice to get a miss on any of our mods. Yeah, that's fine. Um, double miss. Yeah, we take those. I don't know if Dango takes out Bundle in, like, one hit. We're vested here. But I will be swapping in Grim, I think. And probably just... No, actually, I kind of want to leave it on the board. I'm fine taking the damage that goes along with that because I think they're big pinned. Way bigger than they think. Their other two mons are low, low HP Dango, low HP Urshi. I'm actually going to go like this. I don't care if the make doesn't kill the, the bundle here. Nice. Protect. I like that for you. Free dry in the zoom roll is fine. There's a light screen up. Like, we are vested. We're okay. Yeah. Sucks we uh, target Liquidate into that Thundee slot, but it's all right. Hopefully this Dango takes out Bundle. I don't actually know if it does. Yeah. So this though doesn't even matter. So our stats go down here. If they want to bring out the Urshi, I think that's fine. If they want to bring out their Goldango, it's totally fine. The Urshi, I'm worried about Poison Jab. And I think our, our Terra on this Azumarill is like probably like grass or something. So like we don't want to eat that. Um, which means we might swap out the Azumarill, the Scout for what move they have. Aqua Jet might even just do it. Do we have Double Dip Water? We have Grass. All right, so that's not great. But then they, that means they can't hit Dango if they want to lock into like a banded version of that. So that means I can just pivot in the Grim, soak like a potential Poison Attack, lose that Mon, and then Dango just finishes it off. We have Water Terra here. I don't think I would live either way. No, I'm fine with this. I'm fine just staying. Yep. So worst case scenario, we lose our Dango here, but our Azumarill should be able to take out their Urshi I mean, maybe it should be able to take out their Dango. I think we're in a pretty good spot. And if they want to make a read here, they should be able to know that we're vested by how much damage we didn't take from that freeze dry. Another Tailwind. Again, that's kind of just wasting your time. You don't even need the speed control in this situation. Sucker Punch into the Azumarill. Not today, Chief. They're, to they're going for a big banded Dark Terra crit. And we're just like, nope. We're just going to dangle that in front of you. And the Rage quit from the... From the massive outplay, the massive outplay into Rage Quit, bro. We take those all the way to the bank. This team is pretty good. We lost that Moth on the first turn and punished them for massively overextending. That's what we like to see. That's good defensive EGC. All right, Torn Urshi, Chiyu Flutter, pretty standard stuff. What do we want to do here? There's screens potential as well. I'm fine trading screens for this guy. I think that like bringing Goldengo out in the mid game is probably a better idea. So that being said, something like something like Grim as a lead is very strong. I think Grim and something that could help us beat Zap would be really nice. So something like this seems on paper to be pretty decent. Again, if they just want to go Chew Flutter, we'd be forced into like terrestrializing water, but that's okay. Uh, I think Goldango's still also very good here. And then I think I will bring a Zoomeril in this last spot. We want to bring Moth. I'll bring Moth then. It's fine. I just want to bring the Moth. Azumarill is good. Azumarill is very, very good Pokemon here, but don't gotta bring it every game. Let's see. Let's try and force this moth. This moth gets a boost to special attack, which is actually really cool. Um, it hits really hard if it does hit, and 
a lot of the defensive tears that a lot of these teams use, like, you know, a lot of flutters are going water right now, punish that huge with an energy ball. Uh, Urshifu is taken out by energy, but we outspeed Urshifu. This makes them have to need speed control, which means they're not going to be going like Urshi Grim. They shouldn't be able to do that. They have to go like Urshi Torn or Urshi Zap. And then if we can have a board that bullies the Zap off the board um, and deny the tail when the Urshi kind of just loses the Moth as well. So I think we can be in a really good spot. And again, if they want to go like Urshi Torn and we weed Moth, that would be bad for them. So this is, this is a great play from them because we don't know where the Tailwind's coming. So they're going to get the Tailwind up. A uh, good thing for us is we can just light screen and uh, rock side here. And I think that's totally, totally okay. And maybe even, we kind of could even think about going for like pivots, like U-turn or parting shots here too. But I'm fine to I'm fine to light screen right now and just go for a rock side, get some good damage, break sashes, and uh, see if we force any Terras. It's going to be like protect, double protect? No way, that'd be stupid for them. So free damage zap. It's going to be like policy zap, bro. Hurricane! Oh my goodness. Not today, buddy. I ain't switching that hard. All right, so Hurricane misses. That's fine. As it should. Rocks that misses too, right? That's fine. I, I'm not... Hey, that's not even a never lucky. Like, I had a higher shot to hit, right? But, like, I don't want to eat Hurricane either. Um, I'm just going to parting this guy and Rockside. Good play. I think Tailwind if they want. They already had speed control, so they're actually wasting Tailwind putting it up this early, I think. You shouldn't set your speed control until you need it, because you're going to waste turns just having it. I'm going to bring in the Dango, I think. Um, Zap's pretty mitigated right now. And let's see how well Lando eats this Hurricane, if it is going to be the one eating Hurricane. Hmm. Should be fine, as long as we're not taking more than 40% from this. Thunderbolt and the Dango, wow. Nah, it's not doing anything, though. There we go. Double hit rock slides. Nice to see. Great damage. Holy moly. So next turn's a two shot. So we can actually get away with a nasty pot here. Could definitely get away with that. I'm going to do it. Because even if you bring an Urshi, I'm just going to Trastalize to water next turn and probably block it. So it's good to go. Yep. We could U-turn and bring in a Moongus. There's a couple other different things we can do. We can even protect the Dango this turn if we really wanted to. And just go for rock slide, and there's not that much they can do about that. That's I'm I'm actually like low key fine with that too. No, I'll get the nasty spot off because then next turn you'll be over respecting the dango, and then I can correctly weave in something like the Amoongus. Hurricane Hurricane Torn. What's that? And a confused Hurricane Torn. Yo, it's called Bleak Wind. Maybe you've heard of it. Blind Blind Hurricane Torn, huh? Oh my god, we hit the rock slide. Lucky, lucky. Lucky, lucky. Oh my gosh, double hurricane. Oh man, that was scary. I gotta I gotta swap this line out for Amoongus. And so we're probably gonna go like Water Terra if they send out the Urshi. I'll probably click a Shadow Bar and make it rain into something and then pivot in the Amoongus and probably be good to go. Cool. Not that we need to re-intimidate things, but I think that, like like we said, we knew they were going to go Zap. Zap's a good mon versus our team, and Lando kind of just bullied the Zap off the board just enough. They're waiting out the rest last turns of their speed control. Can't believe they have blind double Hurricane. Obviously, there's a Rain Dance somewhere to enable, like, the Water Urshi and the Zap, but, like, it's still weird to not see Bleak win. All right, Chi Yu, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's still Water Terror looking. All right, exactly the same two as we thought, and it is dark. Okay. That's a little dangerous. Do I do this? How many turns left on their Tailwind? Two. Okay. Yeah, we do this. I'm going to pivot in the Grim. Have Grim soak a ton of this. Because, like, we don't want the Lantern to be uh, confused anymore. Not that we really need to intimidate. But it'll weaken the Sucker Punches if they want to go for Sucker Punches when we want to bring the Lando. Let's see what they do. They should be able to read this. I think, like, Wicked Blow plus, like, a Wicked Blow should just take out the Dango. We don't have a Reflect up. It crits through anything anyways. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. If Dango eats this Wicked Blow, like, we bust it, boys. DP? We hold there? All right. Are you double dipping? Survey says. You not double dipping. Cool. Yeah, it's just good damage here. We don't need to KO this Urshi this turn. That wasn't, like, the whole point of this. Yep, just good damage. Great. 
Now let's think about what we want to do. I think I am actually going to protect my Dango this turn because I want to scout and see if they do anything different at all. So like I'm going to protect here. Yes, the Urshi can just hit me and that's completely fine. If the Urshi wants to hit the Dango, Chiyu cannot one-shot Grim. They'd have to flinch with a Dark Pulse and then we can take out the Urshifu and then we have like a 3-1 to one advantage if it's the Chiyu and we win and their speed control is gone. And we just send out Moth and win. And if they ignore the Dango, well, then they just wait up the speed control and we still win with something like uh, Moth in the back, probably. Terastalize. Grass. So now I can click Make It Rain. Yeah, I could. There, there are arguments for clicking Make It Rain last turn, like two turns ago. I just didn't feel like I needed to. I low key thought the Urshi was going to Terastalize into something else. I'm not going to lie. Terra Blast Grim. Are they trying to nuke the Grim? They are. With Terra Blast Grass. Okay, there's the light screen up. Are you nuking my Grim here? I mean, I will send out my Moth, and I will click. They are hitting the Dango. Okay, cool. So they're going to lose their Urshifu win. Cool. I was going to be like, bro, I will send out this Moth, and I will click uh, whatever Poison Sludge Wave and just win the game. <laughs> that is nice. Boom. Dunzo Manifesto. Tail one Peter's out, and we win with Iron Moth. Exactly what we want to see. I think Iron Moth is such a good closer in this in this format. It has super effective moves versus almost everything. It has good enough defensive typing. You don't know where it's going with the booster. It's just such a good mon right now. It's hard to use, right? There are easier things to use. You could a Fluttermane could pin here. There's so many mons that could work in this exact situation. But like this definitely does work. We're just gonna fiery dance. Cool. Yep. And that should be all she wrote. Battle was canceled, and we take those wins all the way to the bank with Iron Moth. That's what we like to see. Okay, Lily Cole, hard TR. Oh, yeah, this is hard. We have good water terrors and good defensive terrors on a lot of these mons. There are a lot of things that we can do right here. That being said, I think that, like, Grim Snarl, we talked about this, I think, briefly in the, the start of the video, but, like, against Hard TR, I think that there's nothing really wrong with going, like, Grim Dango, going for, like, a, like, turn one, like, Reflect Nasty Plot, and return to Protect. They don't have Urshik, right? So we're afforded the luxury of using our Protect, and then swapping out into, like, a Moongus, and so something like that could be very good. So, like, these two, plus this, and then, like, it's really hard to say what we want as the last spot. We can taunt things with this. Like, we can just open up taunt with Lando, and they can't do shit. Maybe that's a good idea, too. Would they really be Mental Herb? They'd have to be Mental Herb. Um, at least one of those TR setters. Otherwise, like, why are you using it? I'm going to bring the Azumarill. I think it's a good pivot for a lot of those mons. And I know we're supposed to bring Iron Moth, but, like, I do think that, like, Azumarill... Azumarill's very good here versus, like, Iron Moth is too situational. They're going to get this trick room up, and it's the we're going to do our absolute best to wait out the storm, use, like, Paul and Puffs and good defensive Terras to try and get out of this one. Sometimes you just gotta lean into it and, like, let your opponent get up their speed control. We've been doing that, like, all day with this team. Um, and just try and, like, bulk them out. So, Lily Cole, standard. Um, they're probably gonna want to open up after you, right? Would you open up after you here? I mean, there's nothing wrong with me white screening. I could just... Am I that guy? They're gonna after you. I'm, I'm actually 100% after you right now. Like they're, they're so after you and me. That means I wanna set my light screen and I wanna get my nasty plot up. And then next turn they're gonna attack into that slot and I'll go with my Grim and just go for a protect spirit break. Unless I just wanted to like attack the f out of that Torkoal and just weaken it to where like, I don't have to care about it like ever again. I'm just going to protect my Grim. There's no reason to overextend right now. No reason to waste Terra. They're trying to get me to waste my resources. If they want to, like, I want to see if they just, like, Leaf Blade my Dango reading Water Terra. Solar Blade. Are you hitting Dango, though? Do you think you're hot stuff out here? Yo, I'm so good at hitting Terra, bro. So maybe this tells them I don't have that. You know, you can click the eruption. That's fine. We got the light screen up. That was the hard part. You can just click it. Yep. Grim takes damage, but not a ton. <sighs> okay. So this turn, they're just going to after you. Oh, the rage quit. Bro, that has to be a rage quit. They, that has to be a rage quit, right? That's like, my combo didn't work. Scoop. I, be I bet you that's like a choice uh, Lily Gant. I bet you. 
And then they're like, ah, fuck, you know, now it doesn't work. Because now they can't go after you correctly. And if I'm just not going to Terra, they can't after you because they're banded. And then I just KO their mons. I can just like, you know, pivot out and do whatever. That has to be, bro. Yo, we take those. I'll take those. I played correctly. I played the game correctly. Don't say I didn't. We take those wins all the way to the bank. All right, here we go. Drago and Dango again with Urshi Torn. Very, very solid team. Um, I think that Azumarill can still be very good here. I think you need to bring Azumarill to beat stuff like this. Um, what I'm going to want to do with Azumarill, though, is catch the Rilla on the Switch and either Ice Spinner into that Rilla slot or Ice Spinner just in general to be able to take away the terrain. Um, against Urshi Torn, I do think that you can get away with leading Moth in a lot of situations. You can also lead Dango. But let's think exactly what we want to do. You can lead Grim, and then something that makes them like over respect. I think something like this could be good. I don't really need the Lando though. I don't think you need Lando. Something that like I, that I could pivot out to like bring in the Azumarill could be very good. So some, I, I think Dango is the right play. Because if they, again, if they lead like with their Dango or their other stuff, we have screen, so we're gonna have the advantage. You're gonna bring our Azumarill here, and then I'm gonna bring our Iron Moth to close out in the back. All right, good set. Here we go. So again, this team just lets the opponent get up speed control and just tries to use good defensive typing, good board positioning with a little bit of redirection and screen sprinkled in to wait out the opponent. This is how like VGC used to be played back in the day before we had such like amazing power creep and stuff like that. So I think like playing a team like this, if you want to try this rental, there's a link to it in the description and at the start of the video. This is a solid rental for building those fundamentals. So they have fake out that works on one. You think about what we re see like this is the thing. Who are they going after? And you can't protect really because like there's an Urshi over there. I'm gonna do this. I think this is a good play. I'm gonna spirit break this Urshi and I'm just gonna make it rain. You could fake out one of them, but either way you're getting a sash broken and you're taking damage on something. This is guaranteeing sticking damage on something. This is fine with me. I, I want them to overcommit to punish my Dango. Just like Glass can play versus that Trick Room team. Overcommit to me terrestrializing and i don't have to you don't have urshi dark i don't gotta do shit right so like i, can, I don't even have to set a screen until i need it and there's no reason to reflect while urshi's on the board certain strikes nail shouldn't get the ko yeah yeah there's a shot this rilla outspeeds my dango and just knock offs me and i'm really sad but i think i think we're like low-key fine here let's get that damage wood hammer they tried to punish i didn't need to i didn't need to terra i didn't need to do anything bro He's like, what? Why didn't you Terra? Everyone goes Water Terra Dango. I don't have to. I'm not required by the rules that you dictate for me to do that. And you're going to probably lose your Urshi this turn, maybe? Oh my god, that's really bad. I wanted that to go down. I, need, I needed that to go down, actually. I needed that to go down. Okay. Well, we played correctly. <laughs> Alright, I got to swap out one of my Mons for... Azumarill, or I can just let it die, right? I can parting the Rilla and bring in Azumarill. That's okay. What if I like hard swapped Goldango out for Azumarill and parting? I'm actually just gonna put up a Reflect. I like that. Yeah, that's fine. You're swapping out the Urshi, so I don't care. And so I'm going to get my Reflect up. You're probably knockoffing if you're doing anything. If you're doing anything, it's probably a knockoff. And so I'm going to get a dual screen here. They're saving that Urshi, huh? Now let's see. No way they would hammer again. They're probably hitting the Grim. I wouldn't be surprised to see a U-turn into one of these mods either. Stomping Tantrum, not bad, not bad. These are most fine. Reflect up. We take those. Cool. Azumarill is chilling right now. I'm gonna white screen first. I'm gonna ice spinner this. Yeah, this is fine. They're gonna go like water dango, and then we're like, bro, I see you going water, I'm going grass. And they don't know that we don't have Terra Blast, but like, bro. <laughs> This is going to make them scared. They're probably going to Nasty Plot. Um, and we're just going to get a Light Screen up. And then from there, we're going to try and stack as many Spirit Breaks as possible. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if like we take out the Rilla this turn. It, I don't think we do. But if we did, 
Um, and then like they bring out Urshi and go for the, the text and try and like weave in as many nasty pots as possible. And I think I might just over respect the Dango and just start like just throwing player ups or like liquidations into it. Looks like no Terra this turn. What if I tried to overcommit to them? Terrastalizing. I have no reason to. So they're probably gonna need a nasty pot off. I wouldn't be surprised to see a make it rain. Maybe they are specs or something. We'll be able to tell by this damage. That looks like more specs damage than not specs damage. Am I wrong? I don't think so. I think that's mostly specs damage. Yeah, we're good. We're holding. We're holding out here. So Rill goes down. Terrain goes down. Yeet. Nice. And we do check their Urshi, I think. I think we have enough damage to check their Urshi. And then we have the right Mons to beat their Dango in the back. I think that's the other thing that's very, very important here. Torn, huh? Didn't expect to see Torn here, I'm not gonna lie. I expected to see Far Giraffe or Dango. Torn's actually the right play here, oddly enough. Our Mons are low. I'm going to Parting Shot this Torn and fodder my uh, Dango here, I think. And I'm gonna Ice Spinner the Torn as well. Yeah, I think this is probably the only play that we're going to get out of this. We have, um, if we can get that dang off the board, like, Moth comes in hot. Oh, are they just attacking Moth right now? That's nah, fine, it's fine. I can need to make a rain. They're at minus one with, like, a light screen up. So they maybe neutral with specs. Weak one, too much damage! Too much damage. Yeah, make a rain will get the double KO, I think. Uh... Oh, speed drop sucks because they don't need to. Ah, that really, really sucks. That's so bad for us. That's so bad for us. I mean, I guess I'll be fine, but like, oh my god, that's still really bad. <sighs> okay. Zuma goes down. I should have probably just aqua jetted. Golden goes at minus two. And now they have speed control. Like, that's the problem with this, is now, like, they don't need to set Tailwind. Come with the Moth. I kind of want to swap in my Grim so we can cycle in, like, another parting if we need to. But, like, I think that I'm just going to probably protect my Dango for one turn, get a Leftovers tick if I need it. And I'm just going to go for the Fiery Dance into the Torn, into the Goldango, sorry. It's probably the play. And if you can't, you can't swap out the Dango for the Urshi. Unless you just want to fodder it and then bring in, like, a, a Dango that's still pinned. For the most part. Moth is the perfect Pokemon to have here. That Torn's at minus one in a white screen, too. That's hitting, like, blind bleak ones. So, like, I think this is fine to, like, low-key ignore it for now. It's probably just clicking, like... Ooh, they can still tear. They can still go water tear the Dango. Let's see how much damage they get. They're at minus two. I think they're specs. That's the thing. I think they're big specs. And they're just like, fuck, we're so pinned. So they can fodder that Urshi. Give my uh, Moth a plus two special attack... Or a uh, plus one special attack for a Fire Dance. And bring that guy back out. Yeah, they're floundering right now. They're just that this is actually a really good play from them. What they're doing here is they're foddering the dango to let us to bring in the Urshi and go for like a big pin here. But I still think that we win, right? I'd like a special attack proc. Damn. So they're gonna bring the Urshi in here, and then they're gonna go tailwind and have Urshi check our moth, but I still think we're low-key fine. Because we're going to be able to take out the Urshi with our Dango. And then I think Grim like, can maybe almost beat their Torn. I wouldn't be surprised if they this turn went like Protect. If I got the Special Attack Frog there, I just, I'm still going to Sludge Wave. But I, I could have Sludge Wave for so much more damage. Yeah, I'm going to click to make it rain. And uh, Sludge Wave. That's the right play. So you can tail one, take out my Moth. Lose your Urshi and your Torn to, um, well, we'll see. Water Terror is fine. If they're not Tailwind and they're just going bl blind bleak wind to try and get a speed drop on them off, they're greedy, bro. Sturdy they're Scarfed! I didn't think they'd be Scarfed! I didn't know they were Scarfed. Yeah, I there was no way I could have known. So what could I, all right, so we have to dodge this bleak wind. It might not get the KO. They're at minus one in the light screen. Come on, Dango. Let me get this live, boys. Oh, we held it. Dango busted. 
<laughs> Yo, lefties. Lefties, please. I did like 10 HP, bro. Bulky Dango. Busted. Oh my goodness. The power of Bulky Dango intensifies. And we got it. That's it. Uh, I think Grim's going to be able to basically hold it. We're going to protect next turn, get a, another Leftovers tick, and then... Single target maker range should be able to close it out. Dude, it ain't easy going up against every single team, I feel. Uh, unless it's playing Hard Trick Room, has Urshi Torn. And teams that are built around defensive play uh, without Fake Out. This team doesn't have Fake Out either. It's so hard to get the right, right board state against these teams. It's so hard. All right, so let's actually see the right play here. White Screen's still up for a hot minute. The right play, I think, is to protect the Dango for this turn. And just go for... A spirit break. I think it's the right play to just like potentially just get the kill right here. I don't think they can even break the Grim, but we'll see. This should also give our Dango enough health to be able to live a non-crit weak one. Grim might just live too. Totally possible. Come on, Grim. Four Grim holds, and this is going to make it so next turn's weak win against our Gold Dango. First of all, you have to hit both your weak ones, but oh, we just take it out. Yo, Grim busted. Grim has like a hundred and. 20 base attack anyways we busted uh it was gonna make it so it was spread damage so we were super super fine in that situation so we'll take those wins guys thank you so much for watching this video hopefully you guys like seeing a more standard team that's built more around like board positioning and more defensive play i know it's not really my wheelhouse or genre of expertise but hopefully you guys try out this rental team i want to bring i want to do my best to show you guys as many cool rentals as i find as possible and i think iron moth is a very very cool mom for this meta that i would highly recommend when paired with goldango the pokemon that i think is going to win the world championships don't forget to answer that question of the day and until next time peace out